Right, um, several people have asked me about my homemade die set and how I've made them. I made this set about 20 years ago and in this video I'd just like to show you how easy it is to make them. Um, the smallest one is to hold a 13 16th inch diameter die. Um, this one is for a 1 inch diameter die. This one is uh, for a 1 and 5 16th um, diameter die. And this evening um, I'm going to be making one to hold the 1 and a half inch diameter die and complete this set. Now they're very simple to use. This one here has been drilled out for half inch diameter and then I've got a half inch diameter piece of silver steel which goes into the Jacobs chuck on the tailstock and that one can slide up and down on that and obviously rotate. And the smaller ones are on 3 8 silver steel. You can get a fairly good set on eBay for about £30 but having a set like this has a great advantage over the bought ones. The bought ones tend to have a fixed handle on here and in some cases it's too long um, but these here have drilled side holes which is again 3 8 in diameter so you can put a piece of silver steel right the way through or just halfway through and use that as the handle to rotate it. And another great thing that you can do with these is that you can actually start the thread off on the lathe and when it becomes a bit tight to turn you can take the component out, put it in a vise, put the silver steel in as a handle and use that to finish the thread um, on the bench. So they're very easy to make and you don't need any special tools or anything just a couple of drills and a boring bar and um, a bench drill or a pillar drill and um, you can get these screws in position just by lining up by eye. I'll show you in a minute how to do that. And also so that they, um, when the die goes into the uh, die holder, um, that it's in the correct uh, position that way for the holes. So for the two larger die holders, you need a piece of aluminium a bar end or a billet, two inches in diameter by about three inches long. And the smaller ones are about one and a half inch or just under in diameter and those are about two and a half inches long. And I use this set both on my Chinese mini lathe and the Myford ML7. So it's perfect for all types of lathes. So to start with I faced off one end and put a nice chamfer on there. Turned it around, put it in the jaws and I've clocked it in to within two thou. center So 
So next I'm going to drill a hole right the way through for the silver steel and um, it's going to be a half inch diameter finished so firstly I'm going to drill through with a drill that's about 50 thou undersize and then when I drill through with the half inch drill it'll be near enough um, spot on on diameter. If you're new to machining if you try and drill through straight with the actual um, half inch diameter drill or the drill that you want um, for size it'll most probably cut over size so that's why you use a smaller drill first and you can see by doing it that way that it hasn't cut over size it's a nice sliding fit on there so that's worth remembering to use a smaller drill first so that the drill doesn't cut over size. So after drilling leave the um, component in the jaws, don't take it out, it's all nicely clocked in. And um, I've got a little trick that I've um, learnt to do recently uh, to speed up the actual rough boring operation. And in this case obviously it's for the die. So I put the die on the front face of the um, job like that, put a large live centre into that and you can do this with um, any type of component you're boring um, a piece out for and um, lock the tailstock up and then I just get a sharpie um, felt tip marker, hold it on there like that and just run it round the face of the work like that and then that'll give me a rough working diameter I know that I've got to be below that line to be safe but I can rough out all this area here very quickly without having to keep measuring it and I'm going to be using this tool here which is an 8mm carbide insert boring bar and you can get these from China for about £6.50 post free very good little tools and they're already um, preset um, at the right angle so when you put them in the tool holder they're in exactly the right position so the um, die is about 13 millimeter wide and I'm going to rough the bore out to about 10 millimeter deep. So I can do that on the outside measuring down with my ruler um, to get the depth and set my stop. So there's a very good reason why I'm actually boring it shallow at first. I'm going to bore that out, obviously 10 mil deep, and I'm going to bore it out um, so it's the right diameter for the die, and that will slip in. And then I'm going to drill and tap the three screw holes um, that hold the die in place. And then I can use the boring bar again and keep facing off the back of the bore until the die goes in far enough just to be able to locate um, centrally on those holes. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute.
So that's the diameter finished, um, push it in there nice and you can pull it out easily so it's not too tight. So next the indents on the die um, for the screws to locate in the side or in the diameter of the die are obviously about 6.5 um, millimeters are from the end face to the center of the hole. So next I use either a turning tool or a pointed tool like this, HSS um, turning tool and I'm going to use this to machine a line which is 6.5 millimeters from the end face to match the center of the indents on the die. And I just use a vernier depth set at 6.5 like that and line the tool up to the centre on there like that. And lock the saddle. And you can just hold the die up to the diameter like that and see that that's central. And then I either get my Sharpie marker pen again or these um, CD um, marker pens are very good, very fine. And sight down um, from the front face of the die and put a mark in exactly where the centre of the um, indents are on the side and one that side there and the third hole will obviously go in the split in the die and then put that into the die holder and draw those marks over the front face of the die holder keeping the die in exactly the same position like that and then you can use a square or a ruler and just carry those lines down over the groove on the diameter like that And that will give you the exact positions to drill the holes for the indents on the die. And you can put the die in there like that, pull it out halfway, and you can see that when those holes are drilled and tapped through the side or the diameter there, they're going to be in exactly the right position. So you can obviously do the drilling and tapping on a milling machine or a bench drill but I'm going to use my tool post drill and if you've made one of these um, you must make sure that the um, drill is on centre line first and then line that up with the um, groove that I did earlier and because it's just quick um, three holes um, I'm just using my battery drill. So lock the carriage in position. And centre the first one. And line up the next one. And 
this out. And last one. I think when I made the other ones I just done this on my um, bench drill but um, this makes it a bit more accurate. And then I take the tool post drill off to change the drill. And on this large um, die holder I'm going to have um, six millimeter allen bolts in the side here. On the um, smaller ones um, I think they're five millimeter. And that's the drilling done. So now I've put the 6mm tap in the Jacob's chuck there, put my um, tap wrench on the back and loosened off the collar and it's ready for tapping. And that allows the spindle to wind forward. The collar slips back like that. And the thread goes in nice and square and I only just start a few threads off and then I finish it off on the vise. Like that, just enough to get the tap square. And that one's ready for finishing off. So that's the holes done. The thread's just started. And now I'll just put that in the vise and finish off those threads. So that's it, the thread's finished and I've put it back in the um, jaws and deburred this with wet and dry or a bit of emery. And then what you do next is you put the um, die in the holder like that and you can sight down um, through the side here. And what you do is you put this back up in the um, chuck, clock it in again and keep facing this bore um, back face off until uh, when you drop the die into the holder you see that the holes um, line up that way so at the moment um, they're too far out as it goes in you can see that you get the holes dead center to the um, threaded holes there so I've put it back in the jaws, um, clocked it in again, and I've zeroed the boring bar on the back face of the bore with the stop. And now I'm going to uh, face off about 10th hour time until the um, die goes into the holder just enough to see a clear um, diameter of that indent. And I've marked these up black uh, with the felt tip marker so I can see it easily through the side.
and when you do this um, you only want to bore it out um, very carefully until you see a clear indent um, it's better to be a few thou shallow um, than a few thou deep and that's because when the screw goes in if it's um, slightly shallow it would um, more uh, pull the die in against the back face um, rather than push it out um, if you go too deep with the bore um, there's a danger that the die won't be touching the back face when you screw these um, screws in the side and you can use a light to shine down and see that you've got them in exactly the right position and I can see there that they're absolutely spot on so to do the side hole for the handle I'm using my um, tool post drill again I've just done a centre drill I've put the middle screw hole to the top and I'm going to drill right the way through now with a pilot drill um, and then finish off with the 3 8 um, drill on the bench drill and I have the drilled hole um, in the center so it's halfway down And that's the side hole finished. And the handle can push right the way through. So next I've sawn the um, three stainless steel bolts off to length. And I've got to put a dome on two of them on the end there to locate in the um, indent on the die and the central one that goes in the split on the die needs a point put on it. And the easiest quickest way to do that is um, deburr the um, bolt so that a couple of nuts can screw in it like that. Um, put it in a vise and tighten the uh, second nut up so that the flats um, all line up and then you can put it into a um, three jaw chuck on the lathe and use a file to make a nice accurate dome on the end like that there and the pointed one is done in much of the same way it's surprising what you can do with a file on a lathe like this if you're careful so that's the die holder nearly complete the pointed one or pointed bolt in the center there and the two 
domed ones for locking in the indent on the die. And all I need to do now is to bore down um, from this end here about 10 millimeter deep and you need the diameter to be um, a bit larger than the largest um, thread diameter that you'll be cutting um, to give it clearance for when it goes through. So in this case I'll be using like a 3 8 BSP thread that's probably the largest one I'll ever use with this and um, therefore I will make the diameter about 0 0.700 of an inch and like I say about 10 millimeter deep so you can see that it's a nice um, easy project to make these and um, they're on a very effective tool and like I say you can use them on the lathe and then you can use them to finish off the work um, in a vise. And just before I finish I'd just like to mention um, about material um, to use for um, jobs like this and I don't know whether you noticed in the video uh, how nice this piece of aluminium was to machine. It machined very much like brass, um, chipped nicely and um, was a pleasure to work with. And that is um, because this piece of aluminium is what I call aircraft aluminium. You can obviously get all different grades of aluminium um, but very often um, when you're buying for, from material suppliers that sell brass, steel and aluminium um, you won't know the actual grade of the aluminium you're buying. So um, if you want a nice piece of aluminium like this it is best to buy off cuts and bar ends on eBay. And that's because these offcuts and bar ends often come from factories that are making good quality um, components like um, aircraft parts. So what I do, um, when I buy a nice piece like this from a seller on eBay, I save that seller to my favourite sellers list for all future purchases. And then I know I'm getting high quality aluminium which is a pleasure to machine and these uh, bar ends and billets are often much cheaper than buying actual lengths of a bar. Plus you can buy them like I did with this one to the actual diameter that you want and save a lot of time on machining. So I hope you enjoyed the video and see how easy it is to make these die holders and if you watch um, future videos of mine you'll probably see these in operation. I have done another video uh, where I use a smaller one of these to thread a piece of um, brass bar on the Chinese mini lathe. But I would only use the method that I have shown um, with the smaller die holders and not with the uh, bigger ones. These really need to be used with a spindle mandrel handle like the one I've um, made for the Chinese mini lathe or the Myford ML7 lathe. And you can see those in um, other videos I've done.